Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. If you're a PC gamer, then perhaps the CPU that is most interesting to you is going to be the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, particularly if you haven't upgraded yet and maybe you're stuck on the AM4 platform and considering whether it's worth it or not to jump into AM5. And finally, we have some official information regarding not only the clock frequency and some other performance data, such as IPC, but we now have a pretty good understanding of how these processors are going to compare against the 7800X 3D and of course by extension the vanilla parts and we're going to get into all of that plus some more after this quick message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So on the 7th of November, AMD have basically confirmed that we are going to be seeing the Ryzen 9000 X3D processors rolling out. However, interestingly, as of the time I'm recording this video, AMD haven't technically confirmed which SKU is going to release. There have been an awful lot of rumors that it will be the eight core parts first, and then over the coming weeks and months, we will see the rest of the lineup, including, of course, the six and 12 core variants. With that said, uh, videocards.com, I will of course leave a link in the video description, have managed to obtain a pretty interesting marketing slide. Now, here you can see the first line, uh, the new Ryzen 7 9800X 3D is the world's fastest gaming processor, built on AMD's Zen 5 technology, next generation 3D V cache, we'll get more to that in just a second, and is fully compatible and ready to use the Socket AM5 ecosystem with leading PCIe Gen 5 bandwidth and fast DDR5 memory support. Now, first line is Zen 5 architecture offers about 16% IPC increase and of course high performance efficiency with eight cores and 16 threads. Now it is worth noting that Zen 5's IPC is all over the place depending on the type of workload and also it seems to differ quite significantly when it comes to servers as well but ultimately yeah in the desktop it seems around 16% is pretty typical. Now next generation 3D vCache technology. AMD have already kind of hinted this uh, with a video that was on Twitter. I think it's also on uh, Facebook and YouTube as well, but maybe I'm just imagining that, but I've definitely seen it on Twitter. And uh, we, they didn't really give information. They just said it was like, you know, this newfangled thing for 3D vCache. So what exactly does that mean? Well, they've stated here 96 megabytes of L3 cache, better thermal performance than the previous generation, and allows for higher clock speeds up to 5.2 gigahertz. Now there had been some rumors and also some benchmarks where the processor was running faster, but of course it did seem like that was being overclocked. And so there were some debates whether the higher clock frequency of 5.2 with the base frequency therefore you know by the time you factor in boosting and all of the other stuff that goes into modern processors especially Ryzen especially when you're only just running a couple of cores it may go up to like 5.5 or 5.7 but at least based on this information and what video cards have posted it seems that 5.2 is the actual boost frequency just to put this into some level of context because obviously that is pretty important this means that it's going to be about 300 megahertz and I use the word about because because again, your setup might slightly vary, but based on the advertised speeds anyway, it's going to be around 300 megahertz slower than the 9700X. So it's not terrible. Obviously, you can overclock and tweak as necessary. Now, it also says strong generation boost in games around 8% and better multi-threaded creator performance around 15%. And this is compared to the 7800X 3D. We'll do some comparisons of some other benchmarks in just a second on how this kind of stacks up against different processes. Uh, but they mentioned a few other things that I, I'll just go through real fast. 
for an manufacturing process, support for DDR5-6000, although it can be overclocked to 8000 MHz plus, works of course with existing coolers and DDR5 memory. So I don't think any of us expected you need to buy a new cooler, obviously it's still on the AM5 platform, so as long as your cooler is capable of uh, uh, handling 120 watts or whatever then you know you're good to go obviously it's still going to run on an am5 motherboard so as long as you've got a bios which is going to be able to handle it again you're good to go and it mentions once again that it's eight core 16 threads 104 megabytes max boost up to 5.2 gigahertz the one unfortunate is it doesn't at least in these um, you know, in this slide, it doesn't go down on like a breakdown of per game performance or any of that stuff, which is a little unfortunate. It would have been nice to get like a more holistic overview of like per game, as obviously some games are really sensitive to Vcash and others just don't really give a crap. The second point is that there is no pricing. So you guys can leave a comment down below what you expect the pricing to be. But let's have a look at some game tests, shall we? I'm going to use um, Tech Power Up's review of the 9950X. Now, it is worth noting that there have been an awful lot of updates recently for Windows and from AMD's drivers as well. Um, also, there have been some leaks for Arrow Lake benchmarks, but um, to what I've understood anyway, Again, there is some really funky stuff going on with Windows Update and basically thread scheduling with the uh, Arrow Lake, well, some of the leaked reviews and performance data. And also perhaps even the Windows Power Plan. Now, how much of that is copium and how much actually turns out to be true, I don't know. I'm actually waiting for a motherboard to arrive, but that's an entirely separate story. Uh, so I can do some Arrow Lake testing myself. But... Um, yeah, I'll be very interested to see how uh, Arrow Lake scales, but um, let's have a look at some performance data rather than just kind of, you know, waffling on. So again, I'm going to be using Tank Power Up here for a moment, and we can see a relative performance data, which is always what I think is going to be handy. Now, once again, just a quick reminder, because uh, I do think this is really important, they are stating that the 8% in games is compared to the 7800X 3D. It is not compared to the vanilla um you know zen 5 chips so if we look here at their data we're looking at around 100 and i'm just going to call it 107 because you know for my sanity if not yours um so if we're looking at around 100 so it's roughly speaking going to be about 115 116 percent which should mean that it does take the performance crown from my understanding arrow lake is not going to win uh, gaming performance um, against like let's just hypothetically say a 14900k again it's going to be very interesting to see how overclocking and lots of other stuff like bios updates windows updates changes the situation over time uh, and again my information is based on well not complete performance data with arrow lake so if i'm wrong and arrow lake gets like 200 times the performance you know than a 13900k or what have you then i apologize but again i'm recording this without a motherboard right now and only going from what i've been hearing so um with the 7800x 3d it's getting around 107 which hypothetically should mean at least according to the amd data that we've got here it's around eight percent faster so again two eights a 16 very complicated math so we're looking at around 115 percent um, based on the 9950X, which right here is the 100% mark. And so if we compare this against the 9700X, we're getting around the same uh, performance. So again, it's going to be around 15, 16% faster than the vanilla chips in gaming. However, as always with this stuff, some games simply scale better. But I know you guys like data because data is happiness, right? Well, Maybe not complete happiness, but it gets us some measure there. So also, let's have another uh, article open, and this is uh, a retesting uh, using both the EGISA update as well as 242H, and this has been conducted by Stephen Walton over at uh, Tech Spot. Now, again, I'm not going to go into each individual game because I'm going to be here until the cows come home, and ultimately, you know, we're just going off of that one slide anyway as the basis of the, you know, how fast the um, the uh, 9800X 3D is. But if we look at the 14 game average here on Tech Spot, 
Uh, and again, we're going to be using the 7800X 3D. If we are comparing the um, data here, of course, the 7800X 3D is the fastest uh, chip in terms of gaming. Uh, so we're looking at 205 frames a second versus the 9700X is 176. So if we were to do a rough napkin math, you're getting somewhere around 220, 230-ish frames a second um, with these particular averages. I say, I would say 230 is a bit optimistic, but again, maybe if they are using faster memory um, on their testing uh, for AMD, I, unfortunately, I don't have the information. Let me just double check that actually. I don't believe... No, there is no disclosure of the type of memory. I'm assuming it was the 6000 MTS memory and uh, TechSpot are also using 6000 MTS memory. So maybe if you do have faster memory, like, you know, 8000 or something like that, and you do some tweaking, maybe you would get a little bit more out of the tank. So anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Ultimately, I think this processor looks about as good as I'd expected. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in creativity apps for the higher core count variants like the 16 cores. Um, so yeah, I mean, unless Intel does have some Arrow Lake refresh that is going to launch, um, or there is something else that really, you know, massive happens in the market for the next while anyway, until Zen 6 or what have you comes out this is probably going to be about the best gaming processor on the market. It's pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, obviously, again, I say that without all of the information yet based on, you know, let's say another six months of BIOS and Windows updates. But for now, anyway, I think hypothetically, we can say this is going to be a very impressive gaming machine. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.